Hi friends welcome to our channel trending places. Today we will showcase you about 100 Islands National Park Philippines. The 100 Islands National Park is in the Pangasinan city of Alaminos. The 123 islands, which occupy an area of around 1,860 hectares, are distributed northward along the Langayan Gulf. They are thought to be approximately 2 million years old. Governor Island, Kazon Island, and Children's Island are the only ones that have been created for tourism. The islands are actually old corals that stretch far inland, in what was once the seabed of an ancient sea. Lowering sea levels have exposed them to the surface, and the eroding action of the ocean waves has resulted in the strange, umbrella-like formations of some of the islands. Although the name, 100 Islands, is catchy, 100 Islands National Park in Pangasinan Province really has 124 islands, with 123 islands at high tide. It has unique mushroom-shaped islands caused by years of ocean waves and eroding action. Three of the 124 islands have been more actively developed as tourist destinations, featuring zip lines, water activities, and restaurants stands. Tourists can visit a few others that are less busy. The majority of the islands are inaccessible and protected in order to protect their valuable wildlife. Some of the wildlife species found living on some of the islands are a species of sea snake and the reticulated python, geckos, monitor lizards, dugong, medium-sized marine mammal, Fraser's dolphin, sea turtles, crab-eating macaque, Asian palm civet, different types of rodents, various bat species. The city administration of Alaminos was able to maintain the 100 Islands National Park by establishing an environmental monitoring program to conserve the park's biodiversity thanks to a study called the Sagip Langayan Gulf Project. This initiative began in 2010 and was even partially supported by the Dutch government. Governor's Island, Virgin Island is a small island off the coast of Virginia. This is one of the more touristy islands, and it will most likely be the first one you visit during your boat tour. A bright orange floating bridge connects it to a nearby island, Virgin Island, allowing you to walk over the park's crystal clear emerald waterways. A long road along Virgin Island's narrow coastline will lead you to the end of this elongated little island, where a small cave can be found. A mermaid statue may be discovered inside this little cave, with the ocean waves slamming into the rocks at a small accessible location at the cave's far end. On Governor's Island, there is a little stand where you may buy refreshments or ice cream. On this island, there are also restrooms. Then there's a long ladder to the summit of the island, the island is relatively high in elevation where there's a small observation platform. From here, you may get a fantastic perspective of the park, including several of the main islands. A short distance down the trail lies the start of a long zip line that leads down to Virgin Island, Governor's Island's neighbor. After Governor's Island, the boatman will often offer you the chance to transfer to Braganza Island, a neighboring island. There isn't much to do on this quiet and little island, save from a modest low-altitude observation platform with a beautiful view. As a result, you'll find few other tourists here, making this a good opportunity to be alone on an island if that's what you want at the time. You may, of course, instruct the boatman to take you to a specific place or island inside the 100 Islands National Park at any time, but, a wonderful follow-up to Governor's Island might be a 5-minute boat trip across the park and on to the snorkeling region, or, Coral Garden. Coral Garden is a rope-enclosed region in the water near Kazon Island that provides a unique snorkeling experience for visitors to the nature park. You will have the option of either helmet diving or free snorkeling throughout the area. You'll get some rare and breathtaking views of some of 100 Island's many valuable coral reefs, and you might even be able to see or touch some of the huge clams. Within the region, there are little floating wooden houses where you can relax during and after your snorkeling adventure. A small secluded island called Old Scout Island is close to the coral garden and snorkeling area. You might also swim to the island's little beach while snorkeling. There's a stone in the shape of a face there, which adds a little creepiness to the island, but it's still a nice area to relax on the beach by yourself or with your loved one s. You'll get a great view of the sea and a handful of the park's other islands. 
Kazon Island is one of these islands, and it's a terrific place to visit after snorkeling and beach bumming on Old Scout Island. After all of that snorkeling and swimming, you're undoubtedly starving. As a result, an obvious next stop, and one that the boatmen frequently recommend, is Kazon Island. This island is made up of three islets and offers a diverse range of activities. This will most likely be the park's busiest island, although it does provide a variety of activities, including, of course, the restaurant. Jet skiing and banana boating are two activities available on the island. There's also a lengthy zip line and a shorter one. Furthermore, there is excellent swimming here, and the beach is white and powdery. Kazon Island is named after Manuel L. Kazon, a former president of the Philippines and well-known Filipino personality and features a bronze monument of him in the center of the island, just above the sign. Children's Island is another fantastic area to swim, especially if you have kids. The shallow waters are ideal for families since they create a safe swimming environment. Additionally, tables and even tents are provided for an overnight stay. In any event, the island offers a pleasant, large swimming area that is fun for all. The boatman will bring you around a little circular-looking island that hosts millions of fruit bats at some point during your tour when you're transferring to and between the more accessible islands. As you drive by, you can see them dangling from trees and rocks. This is also one of the islands that tourists are not permitted to visit. Cathedral Island, which features a massive triangular-shaped crack in the middle, is another inaccessible island worth admiring from afar. It also features an interior grotto with a Virgin Mary display. It is banned to enter the cave, however passing by it provides an opportunity to discreetly pray if desired. Pilgrimage Island, on the other hand, is the ideal place to visit if you're a Christian. This is one of the more recent islands to be open to the public. It's at a somewhat high elevation, which made it an ideal location for the 56-foot-tall Jesus Monument that was completed in 2017. Flowers abound in front of the Jesus statue, which are lovingly maintained by island residents. On and around the island, there is a quiet, serene environment, and whether you are a Christian or not, you will certainly like the serene and tranquil aspect of this well-kept and extremely beautiful island known as Pilgrimage Island. Crocodile and Turtle Islands are two inaccessible islands worth highlighting. These two are also worth observing from afar, boats are not permitted to dock on the islands, and possibly taking selfies with. What makes these islands unique is that they are shaped like a crocodile and a turtle, and they are seen from a horizontal angle rather than from above. The crocodile even appears to be chasing the turtle. We won't go through all of the possible islands on the journey, but the Quenco Tunnel, also known as Dugong Island, is worth mentioning. This island was made popular by the TV show, Marina, and is known as Dugong Island since the cave in the series was home to the Dugong, also known as a sea cow, a species that resided inside the cave. You, as a tourist to the Hundred Islands, are welcome to visit the cave. A small business on the other side sells Halo Halo. It features a section that is placed on stilts and is a nice location to relax and picnic. You can also get a beautiful view of the ocean from here, and the island has a ramp where you may jump into the water and have some fun. You may take a boat journey to the hundred islands from two different entrances in Alamino City. The major entrance is at the Lucap Pier, and all tricycle riders will be aware of this. There is a new alternative welcome center for hundred islands that could be a good option if you want to avoid the crowds on popular days. Many people are unaware of it, but it is a lovely and quiet little center where you can register and board your assigned boat. It's in a rural location near Alaminos with many salt farms, and tricyclists will understand what you mean when you say, Mangrove Alternative Welcome Center Hundred Islands, if you can find. Hope you liked the video. We have more than 150 videos on trending places. Do like and subscribe keep watching.